At number 23 is Kyle McAllister at St Mirren. Um, I'm going to throw this one to you again, James, um, just because I think um, you have the one who done his stats and things for it. And I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued to see what you think of this. Well, <clears throat> he's an interesting one because so he, did, he, he did sort of come through and played a decent amount of football during um, St Mirren's promotion season under Jack Ross. Um, I mean, I think he made about a dozen or so appearances, which, you know, it's not bad. At the time, he was quite young. Uh, and then off the back of that, he got a move to Derby County for, I think it's a couple of hundred grand. So, obviously, you know, they, see, they saw something in him and he's got, you know, they clearly saw the potential that he had. He went he went down south. <laughs> How many times have we said this? It didn't really work out. He had trouble with some injuries. And then he came back on loan to St. Mirren uh, halfway through last season in January. I think personally, he contributed a lot to St Mirren staying up. I think he was really important. I mean, I remember when he first came in, he scored a couple of goals quite early on, maybe in his first two or three games. He scored twice. And, you know, that obviously immediately gives you a lift. It means you've immediately settled in. Uh, but he's in a team like St Mirren, where previously under Owen Kearney and currently under Jim Goodwin, they've never exactly been free-flowing or you know they're they're built on defense so when you've got a creative player like McAllister he's he's really really important within that sort of setup so I mean th this year in terms of the goals and assists he's got like a couple here and a couple there he's not really he, he, could, he could probably be providing a wee bit more but I think it's important to, as well to point out that he's a sort of a utility player and that you know he's played center mid he's played on either wing he's played up front and he seems to just be sort of thrown in wherever he's needed. And I think that, I mean, he's, he's still young. He's, he's been capped a couple of times for the under-21s, I think, as well. Um, and while there's certainly room for improvement, and while he could be contributing more in terms of goals and assists, it's, there is that caveat of they're play, he's playing an innocent Marin team, which, you know, don't score all that many goals. And I think that just, I, I think as well, like, Kyle McGuinness as well, who's another one at St Mirren, who I don't think he has made our top 25, but it looks like, again, that's an, uh, an encouraging prospect. I think guys like that, if they can keep this sort of young players coming through, because obviously St Mirren have an excellent record of bringing players through, particularly midfielders for some reason. If they can sort of keep a hold of these guys and start building a team around them, then I would expect that going forward, you know, they will become more of an effective threat in the final third because that's St Mirren's biggest problem at the moment you know they don't, they don't store, score enough goals now when you look at the stats look at their XG and things like that they should be doing that they should be doing more they've maybe been a little unfortunate but I think when it, guys like Kyle McAllister are going to be really important for St Mirren certainly between now and the end of this season and certainly from next season onwards as well because there is a lack of creativity in that team and as one of the few guys that's able to produce that you know they need to be getting more out of them but certainly, in terms of the raw ingredients, again, he's a really exciting player. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just kind of echo a lot of what you're saying. I, I'm just to kick at the very top. I, I really struggled or wrestled with the idea of including McGuinness or even Kyle McPherson in my list. Um, and, you know, I, as, as any St. Marin fan will be able to tell you, the two of them plus McAllister are all very well regarded at St. Marin. And, uh, it, 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 I just find it interesting the kind of circumstances that he's in, and I think it's fascinating. Obviously, you know the way his career's panned out. Um, basically, the whole Derby County thing was basically just a distraction for a season to an extent. But he's managed to kind of quickly get back on. You know, a lot of players would have went down south, and they would have kind of pestered themselves with trying to prove themselves one way or another, and just continue to kind of fall into poorer and poorer circumstances, at, at, at worse and worse clubs. Um. I think coming back to St Mirren was a huge help for him um, and he's now in a position where he really can properly move on and develop. I think in terms of maybe, you know, as we said at the top of the show, how this is meant to be a balance of current ability and current potential, I do kind of think the reason McAllister is on our list is still maybe heavily weighted towards potential because the kind of frustrating thing is that he's had a kind of season in which he's been really dogged by injury. I mean, he's only maybe had, I think he's only made like a handful of actual starts for St Mirren because... Uh, he's had these, these two injuries that have kind of broke up his season. And what fascinates me is that he's obviously a player who is meant to be an attacking player, is meant to be one who can create and score goals. And that is what kind of St. Mirren have been lacking all season. And it's that kind of chicken and the egg thing where you do think, well, is 
I mean, we all know how St Mirren play and we all know they play their strengths, which is basically making sure they don't concede goals in Paisley, which, you know, to an extent has worked well for them. And I'm certainly not here to kind of question um, Jim Goodwin's uh, coaching tactics. I think he's a fantastic young coach. Um, but as you said, it, it, it you do wonder if that if those if those tactics do kind of hamper the attacking players or blunt their intent going forward. You know... Um, St Mirren have had huge issues with their goal scores and creating chances and you know I know St Mirren fans who are constantly cursing their strikers but I do kind of wonder like whenever clubs are in that situation is it almost like an, it's, it's, it's almost kind of like it's um, you're just kind of you're just kind of compounding the grief because the strikers don't get as many chances as maybe players at other clubs who play more attacking football so therefore they shouldn't be scoring as many goals but also because there are such few chances those chances that do come along come along are highlighted so much more. Um so for example, you know, if a if a player um a beaker or someone misses a one on one, that is the moment that every St. Mirren fan remembers that day because it was maybe one of the few chances they had. So basically in a roundabout way what I'm trying to say here is that I I do wonder if um McAllister could be a solution to that. Maybe if you know um again you know, we don't know how this season's going to end with whether he plays the next year, remaining eight or nine games or we just kind of move on to the next season. He's the kind of player that can maybe offer Jim Goodwin that alternative. And and a maybe good example of this is just how reliant St. Mirren have been on Dermis this season, who I think has been a decent signing for them and I think he's been quite well at times. He's perhaps a little inconsistent in my opinion, but he's been like their main outlet on either wing and we're still only talking about a player who's got to assist his name this season. So that really shows the huge amount, that huge gap in that squad for a player like McAllister. And I, I mean, I can I completely kind of agree with what you said. I think he's a player who can, at 21, he's still got a huge amount of potential and he can really step into a role for that team. A bit like McGinnis and uh, McPherson have already done um, and, and really offer an attacking intent or an attacking outlet that St. Bernard have really struggled to find this season. Yeah, I think it's that, uh, you know, it's it's guile, you know, that he sort of brings to the team, like, you know, a bit of incision, which, you know, St. Bernard don't necessarily always have. I mean, you know, when you look at their midfield, they are primarily sort of defensively minded central midfielders, apart from the young guys that we've spoken about who are coming through. So I think that, yeah, like, a player like that has become so much more valuable in a system like that. But I agree in, with you in that as much. This one's probably based more on potential than on current performances at the moment. That's not to say he's not playing well. I just think it's just that there are, there are, you know, we do need to see more from him. I think, but I've also got faith that we will see more from him.